up first here, risk profile of crypto markets similar to oil and tech. According to analysis from Coinbase's chief economist, digital assets today share a similar risk profile to commodities such as oil and gas and tech and pharmaceutical stocks. This is despite some touting crypto as a hedge against traditional markets. The blog post from Coinbase chief economist Cesare Fracassi on July 6 noted that the correlation between stock and cryptocurrency prices has risen significantly since the 2020 pandemic. Fracassi states that while Bitcoin returns were on average uncorrelated with the performance of the stock market for the first decade of Bitcoin's existence, the relationship has increased quickly since the COVID, COVID uh, pandemic started. The Economist referred back to his institute's monthly insights report from May, which found that Bitcoin and Ethereum have similar volatility to commodities such as natural gas and oil, fluctuating between 4% and 5% on a daily basis. Bitcoin is a digital asset that is often compared to gold. However, according to research, it is far riskier than gold and silver. One economist said that the most appropriate stock comparison to Bitcoin in terms of volatility and market cap is the electric car manufacturer Tesla. Fercasi uh, said that crypto assets are subject to the same risks as traditional asset classes, such as technology stocks. Approximately two thirds of the recent decrease in cryptocurrency prices can be attributed to macroeconomic factors such as inflation and the impending recession. The remaining one third of the decline is due to a general weakening of the outlook for cryptocurrencies. Eric Voorhees, co-founder of Coinapult and CEO and founder of Shapeshift, stated in a Twitter post last week, that the current market crash is of less concern to him than previous ones, as it is the first crash caused by macroeconomic factors external to the cryptocurrency market. Alliance Dow core contributor Q Wang made similar comments on his Twitter account, explaining that previous market cycles were caused by endogenous factors such as the fall of Mt. Gox in 2014 and the burst of the initial coin offering bubble in 2018. So I think that that is some good news for the market. Um, you know, just that statement alone, they think that, you know, this one's not so worrisome because not just crypto is doing bad, like everything is going crazy. So could be good news for crypto. Up next here, Pennywise, crypto stealing malware spreads through YouTube. A new strain of crypto malware is being spread via YouTube, tricking users into downloading software that is designed to steal data from 30 crypto wallets and crypto browser extensions. Cybel, a cyber intelligence company, has been tracking the malware known as Pennywise since it was first identified in May. In a blog post on June 30th, the company said that the malware is likely named after the monster in Stephen King's horror novel, It. Investigation has revealed that the stealer is a new and rapidly growing threat. In its current form, it can target over 30 different browsers and cryptocurrency-related applications, such as cold storage wallets and crypto browser extensions. The data stolen from the victim system comes in the form of Chromium and Mozilla browser information, including cryptocurrency extension data and login data. It can also take screenshots and steal sessions of chat applications such as Discord and Telegram. According to Cybel, the malware also targets cold crypto wallets such as Armory, Bitcoin, Jax, Exodus, Electrum, Atomic Wallet, Guarda, and Coinomi, as well as wallets supporting Zcash and Ethereum by looking for wallet files in the directory and sending a copy of the files to attackers. The cybersecurity company observed that the malware is being disseminated on YouTube videos that portray themselves as free Bitcoin mining software. Cyber criminals or threat actors upload videos instructing viewers to visit the link in the description and download free software. They also encourage viewers to disable their antivirus software, which enables malware to run successfully. According to a report by Cybel, the attacker had, has, had as many as 80 videos on their YouTube channel as of June 30th. However, the channel has since been removed. Cointelegraph found similar links to the malware on other smaller YouTube channels, with videos promising free NFT mining, cracks for paid software, free Spotify premium, game cheats, and mods. Many of these accounts have only been created within the last 24 hours. Interestingly, the malware is designed to halt itself if the victim is based in Russia, Ukraine, Belarus, and Kazakhstan. Cybel also found that the malware converts the victim's stolen time zone data to Russian standard time when the data is sent back to the attackers. It's interesting, I wonder if that's where they're based out of. In January, Chainalysis warned that even low-skilled cybercriminals are now using malware to take funds from crypto hodlers, with crypto jacking accounting for 73% of the total value received by malware-related addresses between 2017 and 2021. That is very unfortunate, but like I always say, make sure that you're being very diligent about what you do. That seems shady in and of itself. Oh, don't take away your antivirus 
software. Uh, download this. It's free. Nothing is free. Rarely ever. So always just be smart with what you're doing. Up next here, MakerDAO voting on collaborating with a traditional bank. The MakerDAO community is voting on a proposal that would allow a traditional bank to join its ecosystem for the first time. If approved, the bank would be able to borrow against its assets using decentralized finance protocols. As of right now, 83% of voters are in support of the proposal. The voting will come to an end at 12 p.m. on July 7th Eastern Time. The proposal involves the creation of a vault with 100 million DAI for Huntington Valley Bank as part of a new collateral type in the Maker Protocol. The Maker Protocol will be able to issue loans to borrowers through a traditional institution that is fully backed. This will allow the Maker Protocol to meet the standards set by the bank. The move to integrate the bank follows closely on the heels of another decision to become more closely entwined with traditional finance after MakerDAO members voted in favor of investing a 500 million DAI in treasuries and corporate bonds last week. MakerDAO is responsible for the Maker Protocol, which issues DAI stablecoins that are pegged to the US dollar in exchange for user deposits of Ether and nearly 30 other cryptocurrencies. Currencies. Huntington Valley Bank is a traditional bank from Pennsylvania that was founded in 1871. The partnership with HVB is important for the Maker Protocol because it enables the issuance of US dollar denominated loans to borrowers. This is made possible by the establishment of a special entity by MakerDAO, which allows for integration with traditional banking. The MakerDAO will establish a multi-bank participation trust in Delaware to link the available capital at HVB with the DAI stablecoin that Maker provides. The trust would be responsible for ensuring that DAI minting and destruction from the vault is carried out properly, as well as managing commercial issues with HVB. In order to mitigate its risks, HVB would initially own 50% of the loans issued through this scheme. However, it would petition MakerDAO to reduce its ownership to a minimum of 5% over time. The remainder of the loans would be owned by MBP Trust. This would allow the bank to effectively issue loans under Pennsylvania law through the Maker Protocol. The Maker Protocol is working to find strategies to weather the bear market. It could earn revenue from the stability fees associated with maintaining the vault and minting DAI. The HVP's legal lending limit would be effectively increased beyond $7 million per borrower, allowing the HVB to generate revenue from yield. The yield is estimated to be as much as 75 basis points above the 30-day average secured overnight financing rate, or SOFR, of 0.083%. If the HVB is successfully integrated into the MakerDAO system, other banks could be onboarded to the system using the same MBP trust. Sounds like an interesting concept. I mean, they're definitely seeming to think outside the box to make sure that, um, you know, they're good in this bear market. So what do you guys think? Do you guys think that that's a good idea? Do you guys think not? Let me know your thoughts. Up next here, Voyager Digital, Fo Voyager, excuse me, Digital Files for Chapter 11 Bankruptcy proposes a recovery plan. After pausing trading, withdrawals, and deposits, crypto exchange Voyager Digital has filed for bankruptcy under Chapter 11 in the Southern District Court of New York. Voyager's Chapter 11 bankruptcy filing indicates that the company may owe up to $10 billion in assets to more than 100,000 creditors. On July 5th, the troubled crypto exchange Voyager filed for bankruptcy in a statement. The move is part of a plan of reorganization that would enable clients to reaccess their accounts and Voyager would return value to customers. Voyager CEO Stephen Ehrlich stated in a July 6 tweet that under its proposed plan, customers with crypto in their account will receive a combination of crypto and proceeds from the Three Arrows Capital recovery, common shares in the newly reorganized company, and Voyager tokens. Finn also confirmed that customers with U.S. dollars in their accounts will be able to access those funds after Metropolitan Commercial Bank completes its reconciliation and fraud prevention process. In a Twitter thread, Ehrlich stated that Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection was the best option for his clients, taking into account all factors. He also reassured users that Voyager would continue operating and that assets would be protected under this bankruptcy protection. Voyager states that it will file first-day motions as part of its reorganization process in order to keep its operations running. Voyager said that it plans to pay its employees in the usual way and continues their primary benefits in certain customer programs without interruption although trading, deposits, withdrawals, and loyalty rewards will remain suspended. Alameda Research, a trading firm, extended a $500 million loan to Voyager to cover losses the lending platform incurred from its exposure to 3AC. This loan agreement is indicative of the difficulties Voyager and its clients have been facing recently. 
The platform lowered its daily withdrawal limit to $10,000 the day after and then announced on July 1st that it would be suspending trading, deposits, withdrawals, and loyalty rewards distributions. The company's subsidiary Voyager Digital LLC has also issued a notice of default to 3AC for failure to make the required payments for its loans of 15,250 Bitcoin and 350 million USD coin. However, Three Arrows Capital is currently undergoing Chapter 15 bankruptcy proceedings and has been reportedly forced to be liquidated by the British Virgin Islands. This suggests that Voyager may have difficulty recovering the funds it extended as a loan. That's unfortunate. Again, uh, you know, when one company goes under and all a lot of these companies are intertwined, they've loaned, they funded, and it kind of just affects the whole ecosystem. So hopefully they can get back up and running soon. Up next here, U.S. expansion for Huobi a step closer after it secures a FinCEN license. The United States Financial Crimes Enforcement Network, or FinCEN, has issued a money services business license to HBIT Inc., a subsidiary of the Huobi cryptocurrency exchange. The cyclies based Huobi said on July 5th that the license creates a foundation for the exchange to carry out crypto-related business in the United States in the future as part of its strategic goals of globalization and compliance. Yobi is a major player in the cryptocurrency space with more than $1 billion in volume in the past 24 hours, according to CoinGecko. Before the Chinese authorities' great crypto crackdown, most Huobi users came from China, but according to the latest figures from Statista, most users in February 2022 originated from Russia and Ukraine. The MSB license permits Huobi's subsidiary to transmit money and operate as a fiat currency exchange. This is a required step by U.S. regulators to ensure FinCEN can monitor financial crimes such as money laundering. The company said that while it is not currently providing crypto exchange services, it expects to do so in the future in a way that complies with U.S. regulations. Huobi has announced that its subsidiaries in Hong Kong have received asset management and securities advising licenses from the country's Securities and Futures Commission. The subsidiaries are also in the process of applying for a license to provide automated trading services and securities trading in order to become a fully compliant crypto exchange in Hong Kong. On June 21st, the exchange won licenses in both New Zealand and the United Arab Emirates. The latter was an innovation license, which it gives access to the local tech industry and special tax treatment. Hyobi Group CFL Lily Zhang said that at the time, the plan was to receive a license from Dubai's Virtual Assets Regulatory Authority, or VARA, that would allow Hyobi to offer its full range of crypto exchange services. Despite some recent setbacks, such as the revocation of its Thai license on June 16th and rumors of significant staff layoffs, the exchange remains committed to its goals. According to Hong Kong-based crypto reporter Colin Wu, Hyobi may lay off up to 30% of its staff. This is based on rumors that Huobi founder Li Lin is looking to sell his 50% stake in the company. The Huobi exchange has lost a significant amount of revenue due to the Chinese government's restrictions on cryptocurrency trading. At this time, Huobi has not made any public statement in response to these reports. So hopefully that will be good for them. They can start operating a little bit more further, it seems like, in these other countries. So if you guys utilize them, let me know what you think. I'm not too familiar with that platform. Last but not least here, Virginia County Fairfax commits $35 million to Van Eck crypto lending firm. The Virginia County of Fairfax has begun investing part of a $35 million sum into a cryptocurrency lending fund that is managed by global asset managers Van Eck. The firm announced that it had received an initial investment commitment from Fairfax County. The county is allocating funds from two retirement systems into a variety of cryptocurrency-focused investment avenues. Fairfax County has indicated that it may begin exploring yield farming in the decentralized finance space as part of its progressive approach to cryptocurrencies. The county has invested a small portion of assets from its employees' retirement system and police officers' retirement into various cryptocurrency companies and ventures since 2018. As Fairfax continues to explore new opportunities in the cryptocurrency space, we are pleased to announce our investment in Vanek's new finance income fund. The fund provides short-term lending arrangements with cryptocurrency companies, platforms, and businesses, and we believe it will be a valuable addition to our portfolio. I think that's cool that they are seeming to take a leap of faith and go with this. Um, I think it's that's big for crypto, especially in that state. The Van Eck website states that the fund offers loans of fiat currency and stable coins to borrowers in the cryptocurrency space. This fund is aimed at accredited investors and offers high returns on investment through exposure to cryptocurrencies. The initial investment required is $1 million. The investment manager promises an easy process that will take away the operational burden associated with direct digital assets lending. 
In recent years, Fairfax County has gradually increased its investment in the cryptocurrency space, allocating funds to seven different projects related to cryptocurrencies. One of these projects focuses on earning profits from the volatility in the market with a hedge fund that intends to take advantage of yield farming, basis trading, and exchange arbitrage opportunities. The county has previously announced its investment into the cryptocurrency and blockchain space. The employees and police retirement systems have invested $10 million and $11 million respectively into Morgan Creek's Blockchain Opportunities Fund. The amount of capital allocated to both funds is less than 1% of their total assets under management as the county gradually increases its investment in the alternative asset class. So it looks like they're not putting all their eggs in one basket at all, less than 1%. Um, but that's pretty cool, just diversifying their portfolio even more. I think it's cool coming from a county that's doing it. That is all we have for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, leave a comment on what you want to see in a future video, and we'll see you next time.